Hey everybody, welcome back. Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 113, and it is Monday, March the 11th. We're actually getting this out on Monday. We did not have one last week just because we were busy here in the shop trying to get orders done from the uh, sale that we had that weekend. Um, so not this past weekend, but the one before, we did run a little 10% sale, basically the same discount that we did at the Prescott show. We always used to do a little show discount. Um, and for those that couldn't make the sale, um, went ahead and ran that sale when we got back just so that you guys had an opportunity to at least take advantage of that uh, through the weekend. But anyway, we got all those orders done. Uh, for the most part, we did run out of a couple patterns. Um, I believe we got those back in and taken care of. Um, if you are waiting on an order or you've had one and it hasn't moved, it might be because of that. But we're back in the shop this morning and i um, going to get the rest of those wrapped up and see where we're at inventory wise. I know on some of our material packs, we're starting to run a little bit low. Um, but also last week, we had a uh, pretty big show for us um, at the Austin Rodeo. The uh, I think they call it Rodeo Austin, but anyway, the Austin Livestock Show and Rodeo. This is one of our major shows, and if you're not familiar with livestock showing and stuff like that, um, I'm learning as I go along. Claudia grew up doing this pretty heavy, um, and so it's all kind of new to me as well. But usually you show you know, your, your steer, your lamb, your pig, your goat, whatever you're showing um, in 4-H or FFA. Show them at your local show as well as your county show, if your county has a show. Um, but then the big event or the big thing is to uh, take them on to what they call major show. Um, and the major shows are usually for Texas, it's uh, San Antonio, Fort Worth, Houston, San, uh, San Antonio, I may have said that already, and Austin. Um, those are some of the bigger major shows there um, that we have. And that's where everything kind of comes down to that. It's kind of the, the big event. Um, I've never been to one before. I mean, I've been to the Houston Rodeo, been to Fort Worth Rodeo, stuff like that, um, livestock thing. And um, it's really beneficial for the kids. There's a lot of big money there as far as for scholarships and prize money and stuff like that for your market animals. It's also a, uh, a good opportunity for those kids to really get into a big show ring with, uh, you know, a lot more people and, uh, and the competition's a lot higher and those kind of things. If you're involved in that, you know exactly what we're talking about. But we decided to do the Austin show as our first major for uh, my daughter. That, that's uh, She's nine years old, so it's kind of her first opportunity. She's been showing heifers and, uh, and cattle for four years now since she was a little bitty um, in jackpot shows and things. But this year was her first year in official 4-H. She showed here at the local show and did well with him. And then we tagged him last year so that he could go to majors. And so we uh, we could have taken him to Houston or San Antonio or Fort Worth. But we decided to go ahead and try Austin because it's close for one. Um, and for two, we kind of got the feeling just from talking to folks and stuff that's a, not quite as big as those other ones, not quite as uh, maybe competitive, I'm not sure. But it just felt like a good, let's start there, you know, and kind of let her get her feet wet and let her see what it's all about because it's a whole different ball game. Um, and so we got there, we, we were out of the shop Thursday and Friday. So we got loaded up early Thursday morning um, and went to what they call staging. Um, and it was, it was pretty neat. I was really worried that it was just gonna be a train wreck trying to get, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how many, I figured there'd be a lot of cattle there. Um, but they it, they really have it organized, and I would assume all the majors, they have to, right? There's too many people. So it was really cool because you got your your dates, your parking passes, all that stuff here locally at our county. She went there and got all that stuff. Um, and then there's a time, you know, the steers are coming in on this day, and staging is that at this time, you got to be in line, and then you'll get unloaded. They give you your spot um, number and stuff. You take your cattle in there and get them all set up. You can purchase tie outs, which is just an area outside where you can tie your cattle overnight and they've got a lot of bedding and things and they're nice and comfortable um, and they're not stuck in a, in a dusty barn all night long. Um, and then, so we had to get a hotel um, and just kind of get everything, but everything was really organized. So like we got there that morning, I think we got there at about seven o'clock from here. It's only about an hour and a half drive from here. And so we got there early, got in line. It was a lot of sitting around, um, which isn't bad if you were to have which I do now, a little barbecue setup, a little maybe a griddle or something, you know, the staging deal was pretty neat. There was kids playing football and just hanging out and, you know, you just, just kind of hanging out in the trailers. You're just parked out in the pasture waiting for your turn. They don't just let everybody line up. You just kind of get out there and then they, they let some in at a time and those people can go up there and get staged up and then begin to unload. So I was really pleased and really impressed with how efficient Austin was. I don't know about the other majors. My wife's been, like I said, to Houston, San 
Antone and Austin or uh, Fort Worth. Um, I would assume it's it's probably similar um, as far as their organization, and yeah, I was really impressed. It was uh, like I said, a lot of sitting around, but just take something with you, you know, rope the dummy, play some games, whatever, um, you know. And but you're you're at least it's it's uh, it's efficient the way they did it. So we ended up getting in there at about noon, got him all set up, set up and everything, and um, ended up coming back. Um, my father-in-law father and I brought the trailer back because at this show, we opted to go with this show. This is what they call a terminal show. Um, for the most part, you if you make the sale, your animal leaves. Whoever buys your animal, whether it's a buyer's group or whatever, they buy the animal. And so they decide what happens to it after that. These are market steers, so they are you know, destined for the processor and that kind of thing. Um, we did not really want to process our steer. Just, um, it's my daughter's decision. And of course you spend a year with these things and you kind of fall in love with them and love on them. And they live the, the, the King's life there in the barn. And so, um, she's all about eating steak, but she said, I really don't want to. And I, I kind of agreed. So we decided, well, there, if she doesn't make the sale, she can he can go on the truck, which is basically they give you market price for the animal, and so that's what we did. But the interesting thing was is uh, it wasn't that I didn't think she could show and do well with her steer. It was just I know there's a lot of competition at those, and um, she had 25 other steers in her class, and so it's like you know I didn't I wasn't thinking you no know, there's no way I just thought you know more than likely you know it's her first show she's nine years old. You know, we didn't spend gobs of money on this steer, so um, he's good, but he's not. You know, there's some steers out there that maybe ten or twenty thousand um, dollars, and so we're just we're gonna go out there and see what happens, right? But we took the trailer back because I wasn't expecting anything, um, anything like that. I, they were only taking the top four for the sale, and so um, we we're just kind of being being honest, you know, with with with, with my 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 mindset. Um, and she got out there and she showed like a pro. Um, he was a little bouncy the first day, just moving him around out there and watching him and stuff like that because he'd been on the trailer most of the day. Um, but he's broke, broke, uh, really good for her. He's real gentle, which is like a big dog. And um, so he was really good. She got out there in that arena, in that show ring, and it's the biggest show ring. She, I mean, this was like a rodeo arena. Um, she has not shown in a ring that big with that many people before, and she handled it so well. I think she showed better at this show than she probably has at any of the jackpots um, that she's done. But again, she's been showing for quite some time. Um, but we were super proud of her. But the but I was already happy. We'd already accomplished the goal that I had in my mind for us, which was getting there and getting her out there and everything going well as far as her showmanship. Um, but then she ended up being she sat at fourth the, the, in the fourth place there for just a just a minute, and right at the end the judge swapped them, and she ended up fifth. So she was one hole out of making the sale, out of twenty five other steers. Her first trip out um, with a decent steer, but not a super pricey steer. Um, and so it was just I was really kind of shocked as I was standing up there watching her because they're they're down there. You're not allowed to go in there with them. Um, she was out there by herself. And I was really shocked. And the only thing that went through my mind was, I've got to drive back to Moulton and get that trailer. Because the sale was going to be, I think it's two weeks from now or next week or something like that. So if she'd have made the sale, he'd have had to come home because we don't live there. So we wouldn't. He, who's going to stay there and feed him for two weeks, right? And so he would have to come home and then go back for the sale, which would have been amazing. It would have been amazing. But I was just thinking, when I took that trailer back, I thought there's no reason for me to worry about it you know we're not, our chances of making the sale are probably low you know uh, not to put bad luck on it just kind of thinking that way and um, I was thinking I'm fixing to have to go back to Moulton and get that trailer um, and then right at the last minute he swapped them um, which was fine I would have loved for her to make the sale I would have gladly drove back to Moulton to get the trailer but we were just all so excited for her. we we couldn't I mean, I was just up there just, just watching her it just makes you really really proud of your kid knowing that she put that much time, that much work over the years into it, and the nights she doesn't want to feed or she doesn't want to clean the stall or, you know, or, or brush him or do whatever, you know, and you kind of got to, they're kids, you got to kind of encourage them and try to try to make them do their responsibility, what they're supposed to do. Um, but to see all that come together and see how well she showed in that ring was really, really cool. So we were really, really proud of her. Then uh, we got our pictures and you do all the thing at the, after the end of the deal and we we're just, she was, 
I think she was a little bit on adrenaline. Like when she came out of the ring, she was just, she was very happy at how well she placed, but she was just like jazzed up. Like she was ready to go um, and go in there again. She's used to showing three or four rings and uh, this was a one-time deal. Um, you go in there one time. And so she was really, I think she, I think, like I said, I think she was kind of on a little adrenaline high there for a minute. I'm sure it was nerve wracking for her being out there, but she handled it really well. Um, but then after that, we had to make the hard, hard walk to the truck um, and uh, put him on the truck and stuff. And that was probably one of the hardest things that I've done as far as showing. I've shown 4-H my entire life. I've, you know, roped and stuff and done things. And, you know, we've we've won and lost and everything else. But that right there, but she she handled it. She had a hard time. But like I said, it's uh, it's part of the, the situation. And, um you know he did good um, he he did a, he was a great steer for her and stuff and we put him on the truck and and um and then we ended up coming back uh that evening we were done by about two o'clock in the afternoon and um made our way back to molten and stuff like that and we're going back next week for her heifer so she's got a heifer that she's been showing um that is tagged for major so she'll show at austin again next week for the heifer show that one definitely will come home we don't um you know heifers don't usually go to processor we'll bring them home she'll have another i think she's got another eight months with her six months with her showing her um and uh, she just got back from getting bred and so she'll end up having a calf at her side hopefully and she'll show her one last time with a calf at her side and then she'll go in the pasture with all the other show heifers that we have so um that's uh that's one of them deals that's the hard deal i guess of heifers compared to steers steers there's more money in it um, if you look at it from a business standpoint, you know, there's also a lot more competition in that. Um, and that's a whole big game. You guys that show steers, you guys that are involved in the, uh, you know, in the steer showing and that kind of thing, you know how competitive that gets. Um, it's just wildly competitive um, and that kind of deal. And I'm not sure if we have the finances to play that game to the to the max like a lot of folks do, but we have fun. And we had fun this year, and she's ready to go steer shopping for her next one. So we will um, be doing that here in the next month or so. We'll be starting to hunt for another one and, and go from there. So, But we do all kind of agree that we enjoy the heifers a little bit more just because we get to keep those. And they end up coming home and, and uh, sitting out in the pasture. You can go out there and love on them whenever you want to. But but anyway, that was our week last week. I just wanted to give you a little update because I'm proud. I'm proud of her. Uh, I'm just... It's just really cool. It'll be interesting next year to see her little brother because he's not quite as competitive as she is when it comes to the cows. Horse stuff, he's all about. Um, guns, he's all about. He's all about a lot of different things, but the cows, he's he, he does well. He shows well, but he's not quite as gritty as she is. She really, really has has it in her blood and really wants to do it. Um, but after watching his big sister out there on that big old arena and uh, with all them kids and stuff, he uh, he seems like he's ready to rock. So we'll see. We're gonna get him a steer. He'll be he'll be eligible next year for that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as anything else we've been working on in the shop, I have been uh, working on my Sheridan saddle. I said I probably wasn't gonna post a lot of update pictures, but I figured you know what, um, you guys help motivate me to keep me working on stuff, and it's real easy for me to get distracted in the shop with other things that I've got to do just from a business standpoint, you know, you know, getting ready. It's almost, it's tax season, right? So we're trying to get all that wrapped up, pain in the butt every year. Um, but trying to do all that, trying to, you know, fill orders and cut stuff and do new videos and come up with new ideas. So it's real easy for me to get sidetracked. So I've kind of decided that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and post whatever pictures I can of this saddle as I build it. But I'll tell you right now, it's not really going to be a theme saddle like the last year's saddle was. It's just going to be a really neat new pattern. I've got kind of a new, um, flower that I've been working on. Some of y'all may have seen me post this on Instagram um, of what, um, what I'm kind of coming up with. It's just kind of a different flower. I'm just trying to do a, a little bit different um, concept as far as the layout and the composition of the tooling and stuff. It's going to be maybe a little bit different. Maybe you guys look at it and say it looks like all your other tooling, but whatever. Um, but I'm going to do that. It's going to be on a TM tree that I've modified some. And um, just kind of trying to do some neat construction things to it and really refine my construction techniques and things like that and and have the tooling you know be be good 
and uh, elegant and things, but but hopefully the hopefully the construction is more the star of the show on this saddle is what I'm hoping for. So I've got a few few ideas, and of course the way I work it'll all come come to pass as I work through the saddle. But anyway, we got the kennel back right here. I started tooling yesterday. Uh, they went to pick up cows yesterday, and so I stayed at the shop and. Um, they, um, and anyway, just working on that and working on some repairs. I've got a couple of mine in that are in for some TLC. I need to get those done. So I'm trying to, I'll have one wrapped up today um, and get that done and kind of go from there. Um, we did have a new project video post Saturday. I told y'all we had two. When we got back from Prescott, things had just been a little crazy, but I took Saturday and I sat in here and I edited, finished editing the, um, sale catalog cover. Now I call it a leather, an adjustable leather notebook is what the video is called, making a, an adjustable leather notebook. It's the newest project video we've done. But like I said, the one I made is for a sale catalog cover, which is for horse sales, particularly race horse sales. They hand out these sale catalogs that have all the, you know, the, the uh, paperwork and, or, you know, information about all the yearlings that they're selling or whatever they're selling there at the sale. And so that's what this book is for, adjustable spine so that you can make this book thicker or thinner depending on what it's going for. Like I said, if you are if you have a lot of clients that go to a lot of horse sales and things, these are great gifts, um, great great items for um, ranches to give to clients as, uh, as, as thank yous or gifts. And so you can definitely make them for that. But I think too, any other concept book, uh, any other notebook where you need it to be adjustable based on what you're putting in there at any given moment, um, then this this concept here you can watch the video and see it's not very hard so you can set this up to fit whatever you need it to fit but the concept itself i think works great um, we do have the pattern pack for that and i want to thank everybody that's that watched the video a lot of you guys got the pattern pack before the video posted because we went ahead and just put them on the website we debuted these patterns this one as well as the saddlebag pattern we debuted those at Prescott, sold a bunch of them out there, and we also sent it out to our newsletter as a pre-order, as we always do. Um, and then when we got back, I just went ahead and put them on the website so they're on there. And so a lot of y'all saw that and went ahead and grabbed one or both of these. And I want to thank everybody. But the pattern pack's been doing well, um, and a lot of people found it this weekend as well whenever the video posted. The saddlebag video will come out next. I've got it almost all the way shot. I just have a little bit left. I've got to sew this frog on here, but here's the saddlebags right here. And these bags are not very big. They're, they're, they're kind of more just like a handy little bag. I designed these originally for a friend of mine that uh, has a uh, background in the yard. And so he gets cattle in and just, you know, gets them going and, and stuff like that. And so he's doing a lot of doctoring here and there and stuff. And so he just needed a little something to carry a few bottles of, of meds and stuff and a few syringes and things. And so I made these little little bags and they're really fun to make and they're easy to make. And they don't take a ton of leather. And I made all of these out of nine, 10 ounce veg tan leather. You could probably make the same bag out of just Latigo or um, even a real nice heavy shap leather of some sort would work great for that too. But that pattern pack is on the website. The video hopefully will be out this week. And so if you're wanting this pattern before the video comes out, or if you just wanna grab your copy, it is available on the website. Um, so that's the two new things. I had a few people comment and, and uh, email about like, hey man, where's the podcast? This that You guys know that's a passion project for us and we do try to get as consistent as we can, but it's just with everything going on, I probably need to hire a producer. <laughs> I have a producer of the podcast, but I'm saying like a producer of me, uh, just in the shop, somebody to handle a lot of things. I just got a lot of things uh, up in the air and going on. And so, um, but we have been interviewing. We do have an episode that's about to come out and uh, it's going to be a good one. I'm really excited. I told some of you guys that were out there in Prescott, I told you who it was going to be. And um, that episode is, I think it's done. I need to check with my producer and see if that one's ready to go. I've got to do a little bit of uh, graphic stuff for the marketing on it, and then we should be able to post that. So hopefully this week that one will be out. And um, and keep sending in your ideas too. A lot of you guys have been sending me some information. You know, hey, have you thought about so-and-so and so-and-so? Um, that's always great because we do keep a list. I kind of keep a list of who who I want to have on and that kind of thing, and that way we can kind of start to get them scheduled up and do an interview. Real quick, I want to make mention, we've mentioned them so many times on this um, Monday Monday show and then on, on our podcast and stuff as well, but we always talk about the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal, and that's who puts on the Waco show, 
Prescott and Sheridan. They also do one in the Netherlands, which is the European Leather Workers Trade Show or something like that. Um, maybe one of these days we'll get out there to that one. It looks really cool. But um, Ralph and Cheryl own the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal, and they've got some great people that work with them, but they're the ones who put on the trade shows. And this, they actually do a magazine. And so uh, some people have kind of, I've talked to and stuff, and they're like, yeah, I like the show, you know, and this and that. They, didn't, they weren't aware that there's an actual publication. They're, this thing comes out, I think, every two months. This one's March and April of this year. This is the newest one right here. And these things are really, I have collections of these. I have tons of these. Um, I've been subscriber to this uh, publication for a long time. There's all kinds of just tips and things in there, little uh, shop projects, uh, different tool reviews, I mean, just whatever. They do articles for from all kinds of artists and things like that. A lot of advertising stuff in here. So if you're looking for supplies or materials, machines, anything like that, Anybody that's in the industry that's uh, of any size usually advertises in this magazine. Um, it's just a really, really good publication. So if you're looking for something to have on your bench and to look forward to checking the mail every couple of months and seeing this come in, be sure and reach out. Go to their website, um, Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal. Just search for it. You'll find it. I'll try to put a link down in the description. But go there and sign up for a subscription. You can do an online subscription. Just read it online if you want to. But there's still something about, we're, I mean, we're a, um, a tangible industry. You know, everything we do is hands-on with leather and, and working with tools and things in the shop. So there's something about having a magazine that comes to the shop and, you know, you can throw it on a bench and then every once in a while at lunch or something, you can flip through it and um, maybe learn a little something, you know, maybe meet some people, hear about somebody you hadn't had never heard about before, different things like that, and have a good contact uh, list for supplies. And there's classifieds in here. There's just different things. Um, so yeah, just check them out. They're just friends of ours, like I said, and, I, and I've had some people that weren't aware that they actually have a actual magazine that they mail out. And, um, and I think you can go back and buy past issues with them or something. You have to check with them on that. But uh, just great folks. They put on a great show. The one in Prescott was awesome. Can't wait to go to Sheridan. And, um, and yeah, they, they just do a really good job. But anyway, check them out. Um, we also have our the classes for the, speaking of Sheridan, the classes for the workshops for Sheridan are posted. I think they posted them right after Prescott. If you're interested in taking one of my classes or somebody else's classes, be sure to go to their website while you're there. Click on the Rocky Mountain Leather Trade Show um, underneath events, and um, you'll go there and then go down, scroll down, and you can find all the workshops and see what's available, what days and times and things like that. I know that one or two of mine are already full, but there's still spaces in the other two. So you can get on there and kind of look at it and kind of see if something's gonna work out for you. I'm doing the same classes that I did at Prescott. I will probably change the classes that I'm doing um, in Waco. I think I'm gonna make Waco the, the show that where I, I do new classes or change it up some maybe. I don't know, these classes seem to be real popular. I do the beginner's floral and then an intermediate to advanced depth and realism class. And both of those seem to, uh, seem to be popular and people are interested in those. But I'd like to work in a project class of some sort where we actually build something. But we'll just kind of see, maybe in Waco, I'll try one and see how it goes. Um, in the last Monday video, we kind of went over some of the stuff I came back from uh, Prescott with. And um, one of them was this 3D embossing filler from Renia. And we've been playing with this in the shop. As you can see, the top of this can is cratered in. That's because I taught my son how to put these paint can lids back on with a hammer and kind of tap those in. The problem is he thinks he's got a really whoop on it. And so <laughs> he's beating, beating this can all, all to heck. So anyway, but the stuff works really good. I kind of played with it and I'm not gonna give really no reason to give a close up, I was just playing around, but I did this little, this little face here or whatever, but I just tried to do just a circle and push that out and then you fill it with this and um, if you've done any kind of 3D embossing, that's what you're doing here. But you can see in this piece, the amount of lift. I mean, there's probably, I don't know, three eighths of an inch of lift um, that I've got pushed that leather out. And then when you put this in the back, it's just leather dust and some other stuff in there. It hardens completely um, overnight. And then you can actually tool on top of this, which was really interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize you could do that. And so I was able to kind of just go in there and have fun and make this little guy. I'll put a picture of him on uh, Instagram and just kind of, that way you can check it out. 
but it's it, that's not really the purpose of what I was, I was just trying to see how this material worked, how the leather worked, and how how the whole concept kind of came together. And it's really cool. The kids, I showed them some stuff, and now they've been playing with it. They've probably used more of this. And it surprisingly doesn't take a lot, but they like playing with it. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Um, but another one, I kind of forgot about this, was in a, my little booth uh, box, and uh, I found it. And it, it's really helpful, but this is by Jurgen, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try, but he's from Germany, and really, really cool guy. If you go to the shows, you've probably met Jurgen. Um, he, he, he's, he's a phenomenal artist. I mean, just, just amazing the kind of work that he does, but he, he gave me this book here and he sells these, I believe. Um, but this is a pattern for the, uh, he calls it the 3d horse heads, but it's just a couple horse heads here. Um, I'm sure you can go, if I can find a link, I will put it in the description down here for where you can find his stuff. But he just kind of walks you through the general concept in this book, you know, and in the front there, there's a pattern for the actual deal. And then he just kind of walks you through it. It's not, you know, I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's, it's extremely step-by-step, -step, but he's giving you the very good uh, instruction as far as what's going on and what's happening uh, frame by frame here to kind of get begin to get that 3D out of it. And so it was a really good step-by-step um, -step deal for me just to get it on my mind on exactly what was going on. I kind of understood it, but I didn't really quite understand exactly what was what was happening when they do the uh, 3D embossing. And so this was a big help. But if you, um, I don't know if Jurgen has anything on uh, YouTube or anything like that, but I'm sure you can find him on Facebook. And um, and like I said, if I can find a link for him, I will put that in the description. And that way you can go to his website or contact him and um, you know, kind of get, get whatever you need if you're interested in doing that. If you're going to Sheridan, take a class with him. That's the best way. There was people in uh, Prescott took class with him and they all couldn't stop talking about it. They said it was amazing. Um, he's just a really good instructor and he's a really cool dude, really nice. And so he, I'm proud to call him a friend and I enjoy seeing him at all the shows and uh, just a lot of fun. But that's really all I got for you this week, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get back at it. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. And we will see you guys next week in the Monday morning briefing.